Hey guys, this is Mulch from Golden Motor. Today I'm super excited to show you guys the X1 Pro Gen 3 CYC motor. Today in this video, I'm gonna be going through all the benefits of having a CYC and all the upgrades that have been done from a Gen 2 to a Gen 3. And also we'll be doing some speed runs and some hill climbing. Let's get right into it. The first upgrade by CYC is a brand new controller that they engineered in house. There's a few benefits to this one. The first one is integrated into the motor housing. So there's a lot less cable. You can see how clean the build is. The second one is it's pre-tuned right out of the box. It's instant torque, not like the Gen 2 where you had a little bit of a lag and the torque coming out. So this one has instant torque and also it's a lot more waterproof than before. All the wires have been sealed in and you could barely see any of the wires. So the second major upgrade that CYC did was the torque sensor. The torque sensor feels so smooth, I'm riding it right now. Basically torque sensing is the, it detects the level of torque on the pedals. So if you're pedaling harder, it's gonna engage right away. So it just goes. Um, if you're, if you're pedaling a little bit, it's only gonna engage a little bit. So it, it's very natural to a biker so they, they don't have to worry about putting it into different pedal assist levels and all that. The third major upgrade is on the display. So there's displays that you can get for 72 volts. There's only one, but if it was 52, there's three. There's the SW102, uh, the DS103, and the 750C. The best thing about it now, it's integrated with the controller and a lot of the settings, like the basic settings, you can change on the display. The fourth major upgrade that CYC did was that so in Gen 2, there were a lot of issues with the magnets demagnetizing because of heating issues. But now that's not a concern because the magnets are much more beefier and they can handle the temperature. Another thing on the motor that they upgraded was it's much more plug and play and easier to install. You just put the slide the motor in and put the torque sensor on the other side and you're good to go. So the fifth major upgrade that CYC did was on the cranks. Uh, the ISI is flying. Uh, in Gen 2, they had the square tapered spline, and an upgrade to an ISI spline is amazing because it's much more robust and it lasts a lot longer. Okay, so the first step is to remove your pedals, and then you remove your cranks, and then after that, you remove your bottom bracket. But in this bike, we've already done those three steps. If you need help with that step, I'm gonna put the video on the top so you can uh, refer to that video. So the first step is to insert the motor into the bottom bracket. Uh, depending on the bottom bracket that you have, if you have a BSA threaded standard bottom bracket, this is where you would insert the motor in. But this one is a press fit bottom bracket. After you have the press fit adapters in the bottom bracket, next step is to insert the motor in the bottom bracket. Make sure your shaft is nice and greased up. Uh, CYC comes with a packet of grease in it, so you should be good with that. Uh, depending on which bottom bracket size you have, that's the uh, spacers that you're gonna get with the kit. So this one came with uh, two uh, half millimeter spacers. This will go on the drive side just in case you need it to prevent the chain ring hitting the chain stay. We drive fitted this motor and this one needed the two um, half millimeter spacers so we put that in and the five millimeter spacer is going to go on the non-drive side after you have the motor in the bottom bracket turn it up and see make sure you have the good ground clearance um, some full suspension bikes have a iscg mount which this bike also has but it is not hitting it so it's going all the way up which is really good uh, the good thing about the cyc it has two uh, controller mounting position so all you have to do is unscrew the two bolts on the other side and lower the controller position and then it will fit any most iscg mounts okay now time to work on the non-drive side so use this mounting bracket that came with the kit and the two bolts use a three millimeter hex and tighten it in after you have the mounting bracket in now is the time to insert the five millimeter spacer since this is a BB92 and the non-drive side bottom bracket cup and then engage it in the thread. So after the threads are engaged with your hand, now tighten it with the tool. We're using a Lecky 1644 socket to do that. And your motor and controller should tuck in nicely.
Okay, now time to install the spindle. So the spindle will go on the drive side. So make sure the spline engages with the torque sensing bottom bracket. Once it's engaged, just push it in and then you'll have to use a mallet to just tap it in. Okay, time now to install the chain. So the easiest way would be to use a uh, chain breaker and then break the quick link and then install the chain on the chain ring. And the good thing about the CYC, it has a narrow wide chain ring. So make sure it goes on flush on the chain ring. So the next step is to check your chain line. So you wanna put your chain in the middle cog and then check your chain line. So this is a perfect chain line. So this is where the spacers, the extra spacers that come with the kit, just in case you wanna adjust your chain line or if your chain ring is hitting the chain stay, use those spacers accordingly. Okay, next step is to install the lock ring. So this tightens the spindle to the bottom bracket and also on the threads. and use a three millimeter hex to tighten it down on the, on the thread. Okay, now time to install the motor mount. So the motor mount comes with a bracket and a couple long bolts and also a piece of rubber so it doesn't scratch up your frame. And there's a dice that's already installed over there. So you just uh, line it up and install the bolt inside the dice and just tighten it up with a three millimeter hex. Okay, so out of your controller, there's three wires coming. One is a eight pin female plug, which is the speed sensor, which we're gonna hook up right now. There is a uh, main wiring harness. That's where the main wiring harness goes. And then one is for the battery. So it's an XT90 plug. So let's plug in our speed sensor now. After you have the speed sensor plugged in, now it's time to put the speed sensor on the chain stay. Use the two zip ties that came with the kit and attach it to the chainstay. Okay, now time to install the magnet onto the spokes. After you tighten it, then line it up with the speed sensor and then tighten it with the flathead screwdriver. So you want the magnet to be as close to the sensor as possible without touching it. Okay, last few steps of the build now. So we're gonna plug in the main wiring harness into the controller. There's two plugs that are coming out of the wiring harness. One is for the throttle, the yellow one, and the green one is for the display. There's also an option to get a wiring harness that has four plugs coming out of it, and the two extra will be for the brakes. Time now to install the throttle. So you have an option to install a thumb throttle, a half twist throttle, and a full twist throttle. We're gonna be installing a thumb throttle on here. and then just use a three millimeter hex to tighten it up. Okay, now time to install the display. So if you're running the X1 Pro on a 72 volt system, then you will be installing a 750C. If you are running it on 52 volts, you have two options. You can install the SW102 or the DS103, which we'll be installing. So the DS103 goes on the center console and then the pin pad can go either on the left side or the right side, but we're gonna put it on the right side. And then just use a two and a half millimeter hex to tighten all the bolts. Okay, last step. So now we're just gonna mount the battery, plug it in, clean up the wires, and then it's time to take it out for a ride. So we're gonna do a top end speed run with the X1 Pro. We're running an X6 controller, which is rated about 3000 watts of power. We're running a 52 volt battery with 60 amp discharge. So we're right at about 3000 watts of power, but not all watts are equal. Um, if you want the top, top end speed on your bike, then you need a 72 volt battery. So let's get into it.
All right, guys, now we're gonna get into the hill climbing test. That's a pretty steep hill behind me. I don't know what grade it is, but I definitely know that it's broken some chains before. Um, and the ground is super mushy, so that makes it even harder. To the and let's see how this thing performs. piece of cake i have water all over my face but i'm still excited because i have my bike ready for the riding season do you 